Okay, here we are, second year of marketing. Super excited. Hashtag draping. I have to do this. Okay. Everyone doing this? Hashtag draping? Yeah? No? Come on, everyone's doing this, right? Okay, well, anyway. Second year of marketing, it's the Mad Men era. This is the cool times, mass marketing. It's TV, it's highballs at lunch, martinis for dinner, uh, you know, the whole 60s creative revolution. It was an amazing time. This is the era that my father worked in advertising and he, by all accounts, had a really, really good time. Uh, and uh, it was a really fantastic period of creation in the American economy. Uh, Post-war economy was booming, brands were being created, and the thing that really changed was the advent of TV. And when TV came along, you ended up in a new era, which was a mass marketing era, and a mass marketing era where you were not able to measure the um, output of the advertising. There was sort of accountability, but a lot of this stuff, really no one knew if it worked or not. Uh, now, it's still lots of really great things happened in that era. You know, it was an era where you had brands being created in a mass market uh, with massive penetration to American households. Uh, you had people, you know, 80, 90 percent of the country watching a single show. Um, it was an amazing time to be in advertising. And for a while, it was a pretty cool time because it seemed that almost anything that you were to advertise on TV and create a brand around would explode and grow. It was a bit of a new media era in, as well. You know, my dad would talk about, uh, he worked at Young and Rubicam or YNR in New York, and he would talk about how in the um, you know, early days of the 1960s when he first started, there was the advertising department, and those are the folks that did the, the print, they did the billboards, they did the radio, and then on like a different floor and sort of like in a corner, they're like a bunch of crazy kids with long hair, smoking dope, and that was like the TV group, right? Because they didn't really understand how was TV going to be used, and advertising was well measured, they understood how it worked, but they didn't know what to do with TV. Um, you know, just skipping ahead, you know, the modern analogy is that, you know, when I started in advertising, there was the advertising group, uh, and you had, you know, the people doing TV and radio and billboard and magazine and, and newspaper, uh, and then on a different floor, you know, in a corner, there were a bunch of crazy kids with long hair, smoking dope, and that was the web group. Right, the web team. I like, was like, wow. Uh, and then more, more contemporarily, uh, now today you've got like the advertising group, which is the web and TV and radio and magazine and newspaper. And, and then on a different floor, in a corner, there's a group of crazy kids with long hair, <laughs> again, smoking dope still, uh, increasingly legal, and they're the social team. Right, and so it, you know, just and then it'll be like you know, you know, things that project into our eyeballs or brain waves. Like it'll just it'll just keep changing, and and the kind of the new thing will become part of the advertising advertising group as we go forward. And I think that for me, like a really this interesting period, it, it developed things like this whole concept of you know using sex to sell. People like Mary Wells Lawrence, uh, who uh, owned her own agency, um, wrote a great book called A Big Life worth reading, a fantastic story. And she uh, kind of invented and ran the advertising program for Braniff Airlines. And Braniff was a, a great brand. They were the first brand, uh, airline brand to really you know, color their planes. Uh, every plane was a different color. They had a lot of fashion. Or the stewardesses at the time uh, wore like, you know, kind of space age bubbles and different costumes. And they, they used sex as a sort of a selling component in the way that they sold the airline. And it's sort of strange in some ways, um, but you know, this is a society in transformation and in flux. Um, this sort of mass marketing uh, model was, was cool, um, but increasingly anything new, was, it was difficult to get feedback. You know, you'd run your TV ad, but you didn't really know if it had an effect on anything. And uh, increasingly marketers started to question whether the work that they were doing was actually making a difference. Now we had all sorts of ways of trying to figure it out. We could run test markets, we would do heavy ups, all sorts of like sort of focus group tests. There was a fair amount of research put into it, but it was very much like um, researching in quantum mechanics. You, you couldn't directly examine the system itself. You had to make assumptions around how the system was working from outside the box of the system itself. And uh, a lot of marketers began to you know, question what they were doing. And a lot of people in the organization began to look at marketing increasingly as a cost center and not as an actual revenue center, which is you know, the reputation it had in the first year of marketing. 
And that's the second era. And I, you know, I, I, I was actually lucky enough to, to work right at the tail end of it, but just for a very short moment, I just got a, like a little glimpse of what that was like. And, um, and it was, I think there was a fun part of it, but I did find it frustrating that um, the lack of accountability created a very political environment because the only way to really decide if something was good is if someone agreed. There was no factual way of proving it. And uh, that actually led me to, to leave um, that part of the industry at that time and move into a field where I felt things could be measured, which is you know the web. So I was a, an early stage web entrepreneur because I could see for the first time that here was a tool coming out that could replicate what the first era marketers knew how to do. Uh, and I was, I was tired of arguing about advertising in a theoretical sense. I wanted to know what was working because it was working. And that's what's cool about the third era of marketing, which is what we're gonna talk about in the next installment of The Wonderful World of Marketing.